Creativity's hand hovered a hair's breadth away from the grain of light, trembling as he fought with himself. He shouldn't. He shouldn't touch it. But he wanted to. He bit his lip, staring at it. It was light, and it was there, and it had been there, shining for five ever without going out. It wouldn't hurt to... No. Creativity shook his head, body drawing back, though his hand remained as close as ever to it. He should stay away. But it was light, and he was supposed to be in darkness. But it was light, and it hadn't been chased away by the darkness, and he really wanted a cool prick on the tip of his finger, a zing of energy up his arm. Creativity's eyes went wide as colors briefly swirled in his vision, colors he'd never expected to see again. Oh, he breathed, his fingertips stroking the pinpoint of light. Colors. That, this... This wasn't bad. They were formless, harmless. Colors weren't anything the masters would get mad at so long as he just looked at them. Cautiously, he picked up the grain, expecting the light to go out. But no. Ooh. The sound involuntarily left his mouth again as the colors once more spun around within the illumination, filling his vision, the black surrounding him in his enclosure feeling less oppressive as he held the grain up in front of his face. Creativity let out a shuddering breath, his tense shoulders relaxing a fraction as the light stayed steady. He rolled the illumination between finger and thumb, the cool, smooth surface soothing to him as the colors he could see danced about its surface. The corner of his mouth twitched. Colors. Colors. He hadn't known how much he'd missed them until this moment. How could he have nearly forgotten these? The names for them came slowly to his mind as he watched them flow out of the grain to twist about his hand. Purple. Curling like a thick vine around his thumb and down to his wrist, delicate tendrils splitting off of it and curling into small spirals. Blue. Splashing through the gaps in his fingers, flowing and ebbing like the tide along the creases in his sallow skin. Yellow. Sparkling on top of each fingernail like fuzzy stars, pulsing in time to his quickening heartbeat. Green. Pea-like orbs that lazily circled from the grain of light to lightly bounce just above his hand like rocks skipping over a still pond. And red, creativity whispered, his breath catching as he leaned forward to draw closer to the vibrant color as it swirled out in front of him in a fine ribbon. Red. His other hand came up to lightly cup the color as it wove around in the air. Red, his favorite. How could he have forgotten such a versatile color? The meaning of life, the heart's delight, the signal of victory, the joy of... A tap from above had creativity cringing against the far side of the box, the grain of illumination hidden in his fist held tightly against his chest, colors gone, leaving him once more in that horrible, black, empty darkness. What he done what had he done wrong? His mind swirled in panic, his hands spasming, letting the light escape in shards to fail against the walls, creating creepy shadows along his enclosure that only spurred the terror in his mind. Monsters. Creativity curled up tighter, ears straining for another tapping noise as he searched the darkness above him. Should he not have touched the light? Was it wrong? How were colors wrong? He'd just been looking at them. He hadn't done anything with them. He'd just been looking. That was all. The masters couldn't get mad at him for looking, could they? They could. They were. They were mad. No, no. He was going to be enclosed in a tighter space. He was going to... Creativity froze eyes widening as another ball of light the size of a large marble appeared at the lip of the box, balancing there briefly before dropping to the floor with a quiet thud. Once more, the lid above him clicked shut. He stayed frozen in place, staring at the new illumination in his space, its yellow-white glow spreading out like rays of half-remembered sunshine. This was... Creativity lowered his hands, carefully setting the illumination grain down on the floor of his enclosure before he scooted forward, wincing as his legs protested, but ignoring it. Had... had he done good? Had he been right to look at the colors of the grain? Was this his reward for doing right, because he hadn't tried to escape? Because he just looked? Was he being good enough to receive ideas again, to help? But no. 
creativity bit the side of his tongue as he carefully scooped up the new light into his hands. This wasn't the master's handiwork. He could feel the difference. The master's lights always carried a faint sting to them, a roughness to the edges that irritated his skin. This marble light, a warmer color than the grain, was still cool to the touch. Smooth, calming, and creativity wiggled his shoulders as his fingers pressed into the marble. Squishy. A tiny giggle escaped from him before he could stop it, and he tensed, looking up at the lid, eyes wide, still, quiet. Shh. No movement. Creativity relaxed. He'd been quiet enough not to anger the creature that was outside. Good. His fingers moved, drawing his attention away from the lid as they pressed into the marble, squishing it from all sides. The muscles on his face protested as his lips pulled back into a rusty smile as he created basic shapes with eager fingers, shapes he'd almost forgotten along with the colors in his quiet isolation. Pulled the circle and there was an oval, squished the sides and a rectangle replaced it. His fingers danced along the malleable surface, forming squares, triangles, and trapezoids in quick succession. Again, creativity wiggled, a soft bubble of laughter escaping from him as he altered the marble, a faint zing of energy rushing up and down his spine as his mind whirled, caught up in the process of creating. Simple shapes, so easy, but... He leaned forward, intent, pulling and prodding at the marble until one end formed a rectangle, the other end rounding out in a semicircle. He grinned, holding it up. A tree. That's what the shape combination was. Almost. He reached out blindly, grabbing the tiny grain of illumination and pushing it into the marble, massaging the surface to encourage the colors he wanted to come forth. Brown. Green. A tree, he whispered with quiet satisfaction. He bobbed his head happily, a quiet hum escaping from his mouth as he brushed the green of his tree with one finger, spinning the color therein to yellow, red, orange. A tree with leaves about the fall. Autumn. He shifted them back to green, green with many blobs of pink and red. Flowers, blooming, spring. Creativity leaned forward, his bangs falling in front of his eyes, gently swaying back and forth in the faint breeze as he played with the shape-shifting marble. Absently, he pushed his hair out of the way as he focused his attention on altering the shape from a simple tree, changing it again and again, his blocky houses, flowers, and animals becoming more elegant with each shift under his fumbling fingers. Warmth danced in his chest as he stifled another giggle. It had been far too long since he'd been allowed to create things like this. That's pretty cool. Creativity squeaked, recoiling at the unexpected voice coming from above. The monster! The marble in his hands shifted into a single orange claw in his panic. He jerked his head up, arms shaking as he held the claw protectively out in front of him. S stay away, he stuttered, his voice raspy from disuse as he confronted the hooded finger figure peering down at him. The monster shifted its body, a blackened limb slowly moving up to push the dark hood off of its head, revealing the pale face of a young human male. I'm not going to hurt you, he said. His light-colored eyes, half hidden by creativity, frowned. Purple? He mumbled, staring at the fringe of hair. No, his eyes were deceiving him. The orange claw shifted to white to give off a purer glow. Still purple. Hair wasn't supposed to be purple. That wasn't a natural color. The masters had told him that time and time again. The light eyes, which creativity realized were also another unnatural shade of purple, flicked upwards, then back down to creativity. My hair? Yeah. The man bared his teeth, and flint creativity flinched back before he realized it was a smile. The man was smiling at him. When was the last time his masters had smiled at him? He couldn't remember. The male lowered his head, resting it on the edge of the box, his black hands, no gloved hands, resting on either side. You want to touch it? He asked. Creativity licked dry lips. Yes, but was it a test? Was it a trick? This month's man could be here to hurt him, but the hair was purple and he wanted to feel it. I promise I won't move, the male said. You're safe. No, touch me? Creativity whispered, edging forward, one hand shakily pulling away from the clawed shape light. 
The masters would be mad if they found him like this, so mad. But this male had given him little sparks to play with, and he hadn't gotten mad. He said, he'd said it was cool. Ranger's oath, I won't. Creativity clutched the claw with his other hand, eyes going wide. A ranger? Here? Why had the masters allowed one of the guardians to come within their walls? Were they no longer safe behind their defenses? His breathing hitched. Was it because he and the other creativities hadn't been good enough to continue to protect them? Is that okay? The ranger asked, his fingers twitching on the edge of the box. Creativity lowered his hand, drawing the claw tight against his chest. Where's the masters? Why were they allowing a ranger to open his box? The light eyes darkened to a shade of purple deeper than the man's hair. They're gone. Creativity stiffened. Gone? Had they left the ranger to guard their keep to find better creativities? He swallowed, heart sinking. He hadn't been good enough. But he'd been trying so hard to be still and quiet. When will they be back? He asked softly. Maybe, if he was good, by the time they got back, he could... The man straightened, shaking his head. Never, he stated coolly. They're dead.